this cardigan sits. It fits and it sits and we're not, we're not going anywhere. Let me show you why. This is, I'm so excited about this. Hello and welcome to Mando Bug Crafts episode 122. What's up everybody? My name is Amanda, but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug. And this is my crafty podcast where I inspire and educate you on your making journey by sharing mine. In today's episode, I've got crochet and crochet design to talk about. I'll have timestamps time stamps linked down below for the different sections in this video. Starting out with something I've learned. You may have noticed a couple of new finished objects here. And this one, this witch's hat, I learned a new technique. Now, the technique itself is not new. It's super common. I just never have used it in a pattern. So, I did the back post single crochet for the very first time. The back post and front post stitches aren't new to me. I've just never done it on single crochet before. It gives you the most lovely texture. I absolutely love the way that this stitch worked up and it's the number one reason I really, really wanted to make this hat. So this hat is called Fleur de Noir Witch's Hat by Kat Mayhew. It is available for uh, for sale on Ravelry and it just came out, I think, last week. So, the story of this hat. I have been playing around on TikTok, having so much fun, and I'm meeting a lot of really cool makers on there, and one of them is Kat, whose handle on TikTok is at Groovy Groomies. And she posted this hat and was like, pattern coming soon, and I was like, ah, I need it. And so she called for testers, and I was kind of waiting, and somebody else on TikTok was like, oh, what do you want to make that's Halloween themed? And I tagged her, and I was like, her hat? <laughs> and then eventually she asked, would you like to test it for me? Because I'm still waiting for testers to finish up and I want to get it out. So I got to test this hat pattern for her. And one of the things I really loved about this hat pattern is it's worked from the top down. So it is available in adult small to adult extra large. And because it's from the top down, even if you're not exactly meeting gauge, you can keep growing your hat. So I usually wear a small, but because my gauge was a little off with the yarns I chose, I just kept going to the medium size and you can try it on before you start your brim to know that you're making the right size. So I really like that. You don't even have to gauge swatch, really. <laughs> uh, the pattern calls for holding two strands double. Her original pattern held DK weight with a worsted weight, and I went with two worsted weights held double. It's worked at a nice tight gauge. I believe I used a five millimeter hook with two strands of worsted weight. So it is like one of those projects where you may need to take a break because when I work at that dense of a gauge, that tight of a gauge so that this brim stands up on its own, right? Like, it ain't going nowhere. Uh, it tends to hurt my hands. So I did have to take breaks. And especially with the back post single crochet, um, you have to, I guess for lack of a better word, fight the yarn even more. So those rows were especially harder on my hands. So do be aware of that, but it's so worth it. You could just do a row, take a break, you know, give your hands rest. Uh, but then you get this awesome hat and this is um, formed. So you could wear it traditionally pointed, but I like the little the little crook in it. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. Um, my row gauge was taller than hers, so my brim is longer than her original brim, but of course that's something that's easy to customize, and I really like this fun wide brim. I love this hat so much. The only witch's hats that I've ever owned are those plastic ones from the store, and they just don't, they don't hold up well over time. I will have this hat probably for the rest of my life, and my daughter Emily has already begged me for one. So, uh, and that's the other thing. You could easily, after making one size, figure out how to make any size. So that is, well, I can't say that, not everybody, but I do feel like it was pretty easy to figure out. If you are an intermediate crocheter, you could easily modify this pattern to make a kid size. 
that's what I think that's what I'm trying to say here <laughs> so I forget sometimes I've been crocheting for so long and I've learned so many skills that it I, I think things are easy that I did not think were easy when I started so I need to reel that in a bit um, I don't want to hype up the easiness but yes anyways that is this hat let me show you the labels for the yarns that I used because they're all gone I actually ran out of yarn um, I ran out of the silver thread in my hat and then I also ran out of the gray that I used so the very final border and you can't even tell I substituted yarns oh maybe you can tell a little bit it's a little darker on this very last row um, oh, gosh that looks creepy sorry guys <laughs> uh, the labels so if you watched my Hobie yarn haul, I ordered yarn to redo a design, a, redo a sock design, and the yarn, the main color, was a single ply and it was not going to work. But the contrasting color that I ordered, that is a sock yarn, worked perfectly in this hat. So this is Navia sock yarn and it's a worsted weight sock yarn. So it's 70% wool, 30% nylon. I used both 50 gram balls in this hat and I ran out on the last row. And I held that with this acrylic wool blend. This is Woolo Yarns Burrow. It's also a worsted weight and it is, where is the content? 75% acrylic, 25% wool. So this is a, an acrylic wool blend hat. And then for the glitter, I bought this lace weight glitter nylon at Vogue Knitting Live at least three years ago and it's just been sitting in my stash and I loved the original sample that had glitter in it so I ended up holding that lace weight along with the two worsted weights to get that glitter. Uh, it was Marvin, let me let me find the tag, <laughs> Marvin. It was Mary Gavin Yarns. I just smashed that into one word. It's not Marvin. Mary Gavin Yarns. And this is outrageous in the charcoal colorway. And it was only 25 grams, I want to say. It doesn't have the weight on here, but it was only 225 yards of a lace weight, so it had to be like 25 grams. 65% viscose, 35% metallized polyester. It blings, you guys, it blings, and it's super soft. It's not a scratchy sparkle whatsoever, uh, but I do remember it was expensive, so <laughs> yeah, that's the third yarn that I held in here. So that last row, to keep the sparkle, I had, and I don't have it with me here, I had Hirschner's Worsted 8 in the black sparkle colorway, and I held that with the, the rest of my willow for that last round, and you can almost not even tell. So if you wanted to make it on a more uh, budget-friendly uh, basis, Willow Burrow and Hirschner's Worsted 8 in the black sparkle looks almost identical and will work. So I did want to mention that. So yeah, I tested this for her. It's available now. I'll have it all linked down below and I love it so much. So let's move on to finished objects. Dun, 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 dun. You guys, the Nightmare Before Christmas cardigan is done. So this is the Nightmare, the Nightmare Before Christmas inspired Cardi by Alt Knots and I've been working on this for a while. All that was left was the ribbing and I did it and we're done. So I think I had the sleeves ribbing done last time I showed it off and I had to finish the bottom ribbing. So I did the rest of the ribbing across the bottom and then I, it took so long to get the ribbing across the bottom done. I was like, you know, not doing this. I actually picked up stitches along the button band and knit. <laughs> I knit the last ribbing because slip stitch ribbing, while it looks gorgeous and I do love its look, it's slower for me than actually knitting ribbing. And since this isn't a personal design that's specifically for crochet, I was like, what am I doing? I just need to pick up and knit this. And so I did and it did, it went way faster. But I think I unlocked, like, at least in my mind. Like, I'm not saying that this is a new novel concept, but it's something that I didn't know about. And 
I'm in love uh, with what I did to the button band. So let me take it off to show you. Well, actually, let's back that up. Let me show you how well this fits, you guys. Normally with open front cardigans that don't have much of a front like this, I have issues with them falling off. This is going nowhere, like nowhere. I don't feel like I'm constantly like pulling it up my shoulders or pulling it closed. Like this cardigan sits, it fits and it sits and we're not, we're not going anywhere. Let me show you why. This is, I'm so excited about this right here. So when I knit the ribbing across the back of the neck where the front panels meet the back of the neck, I put decreases in the corner like you would for a mitered square. Oh, you guys, this has provided like a stretchy shoulder shaping. And because the decreases decreased the back neck width of the pattern, it's tight around the back of my neck it doesn't go anywhere. It's so amazing. I love this so much. And I'm excited to incorporate this in future cardigan designs because, uh, especially for drop shoulder construction, because this just blew my mind. Like it fits so good. <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. So more details on the cardigan if you haven't been following the saga of me creating this. This is a pattern by Alt Knots that I got on her blog for free. I think once she fully releases her patterns, they're available for sale with a PDF, but this one hasn't like come out in that form yet. Um, and I will have it linked below and do be aware that when you go to her blog, there's no finished photo of the pattern yet. There's just kind of like a whip picture. So I had to modify it quite a bit because I messed up and also was focused on using yarn from Stash. So the original pattern has this striping all over on Jack's side. So the sleeve should be striped like this as well, but I ran out of my white, which was Pumpkin Nose by Schmutzarella Yarns. So I modified the sleeves to incorporate some vertical stripes with the rest of I the with the rest of that yarn that I had, um, and then the black for the rest. Then I messed up because I didn't take I didn't add ease to my measurements, and I didn't have enough of a front panel width. So I ended up adding underarm panels to give me extra width, which means that this drop shoulder construction pattern has some underarm shaping by accident, but it helps with the fit. And then on Sally's side, the original pattern is like, I think she wrote it for five by five squares. And so you patchwork five by five squares together, but I went all sorts of adventurous freeform on it. And I did, I think I started with rectangles and then I added some triangles and just really played with shapes from there. And I had so much fun doing it. This side is primarily indie dyed yarn. So I did fingering weight held double using Halloween inspired colorways from indie dyers like Schmutzarella Yarns, Nidian Color and Cattails Yarns. And then the rest were some things in stash. Like this one I'm pretty sure is Dream in Color sm um, Schmushy. Schmushy. And I, I think there might be some Malabrigo in here as well and some Penguin Soup yarns. Uh, so the black is Shoppable Bio Merinos and that is a 95% wool, 5% linen blend. It's a sport weight that I held double. So it it isn't, it isn't perfectly the same gauge throughout the whole pattern, but because it's a patchwork pattern, I was able to customize the fit. But yeah, it's all done and I love it so much. It is so me because I've been collecting these colorways for years. Every time I see a Halloween colorway that I'm in love with, I just throw it in my cart and don't even think about it. And then it ends up sitting in stash. So it was exciting to break into some new Hanks as well as use up scraps from leftover Hanks as well. Uh, yeah, so. That is the Nightmare Before Christmas cardigan all done. Moving on to works in progress, the Lift Your Spirits crochet along has started. Oh my gosh, and you guys have been so sweet to me. Wow, I am blown away by the number of people participating uh, in all places. I get tagged on TikTok, on Instagram, and the Facebook group 
my goodness, there's over 300 of you guys in there and every day I get to see pictures of the shawl and it's so exciting. So if you haven't joined the Facebook group, I'll have it linked down below. Come in here and check it out because people are doing some really fun things with the pattern. Like there is somebody making a giant bulky version using an in hook and it's huge and there are people getting super adventurous with the colors there's one that looks like candy corn there's lavender ones there are slime green ones and I'm loving all of the glow-in-the-dark pictures my goodness I am having so much fun and I really hope you guys are too let me show you my progress on mine because I am actually crocheting along with you slightly I'm working on a small sample since I don't have a size small sample so my size small sample is being worked up in Schmutzarella Yarns on her Dude Base in the Draft of Living Death colorway, which is a Harry Potter potion inspired colorway. And this is how, oh, I sh probably should have spoiler alerted that. So sorry. <laughs> the second clue comes out tomorrow, so I feel like it's not too bad. Sorry, guys. Uh, you've probably already had it spoiled by now anyways. But yeah, this is up through row 14 because on round 15 is when beads will be added and I've decided to bead this version after all. This colorway is a little more variegated than I expected it to be, so adding beads is really going to help the pattern pop. So that is, if you guys want to use a more variegated colorway, then adding beads will help uh, your little ghosties show up. Um, but if you want them to be more hidden, that's cool too, right? That's the whole thing about ghosts is their the ethereal aspect of it. So I am loving this. I'm so excited and just waiting on my beads. Uh, this is, I have a, another hank because it does take just over one hank of fingering weight yarn to do the small size. Or you can use DK weight. Some people in the Facebook group, I know Kim of Unapologetically Mocha Crochet and Crafts is using True Boo Sparkle, and I love the way that her shawl is working up so far. Theoretically, when you switch a yarn weight in a pattern, you need the same yardage, but you end up with a different finished dimension. So if the pattern calls, the fingering weight pattern calls for 510 yards, I believe that's how many it calls for, uh, then that's how many that's how much you need to make every stitch in the pattern but it'll end up larger because the dk weight makes larger stitches and i think that's a rough estimate it may require less or more yardage by a smidge but the as long as you're close to the yardage i think that's correct at least that's what makes sense theoretically in my mind so yeah, you could make the small size in a thicker yarn and get a bigger shawl without having to crochet forever because we're only clue one in and everybody's shawls are looking pretty, pretty long already, right? So yes, that is my progress on the Lift Your Spirits crochet along, mystery crochet along. Moving on to my next work in progress, I have had to do some frogging. So, you guys may recognize this cardigan. This is, it has a name now. I've decided to name it the Ice Cream Party Cardi because it uses Lion Brand Ice Cream Cotton Blend yarn. So I thought, how fun of a name is Ice Cream Party Cardi? So my order from Lion Brand came in and so now I was able to make the other sleeve and seam the entire sweater together. And I also ordered Lion Brand, here it is. Oh, you can see that I had to frog it. This is Lion Brand Misty Nights. Yeah, Misty Nights, which I don't know if I just wasn't thinking clearly when I ordered it or I wasn't completely aware. Uh, it has sequins in it, which are gorgeous and sparkle beautifully, but they are a hard, sharp, plastic, which was not suitable for the ribbing on the cardigan. I made up the first uh, sleeve, which do I, yeah, I still have this one on here. I'm in the process of cutting it, uh, it off. <laughs> I made up the first, uh, oh boy, that's getting really blown out. I made up the first ribbing on the first sleeve and I had Emily try it on to be like, hey, 
is this too scratchy for you? And she's like, no, it's fine, I love it. And she ran off. I said, okay. So I put ribbing on the other sleeve and I put it almost all the way around the button band, all the way to the point I had to figure out where to place the buttonholes. And when she came home from school that day, I had her try it on and she's like, oh, this is too scratchy, mom. I don't like it. This is not, I can't. So I had to rip the whole thing out. And I have this much left in the original color in the original yarn so I'm thinking this may be enough to get me through the ribbing on the rest of the cardigan and instead of having a contrasting color I'll just do it in the same yarn it will work up a different striping sequence but this ice cream cotton blend is super soft like it's really soft and it gives really good drape. I do really enjoy this yarn and as of this recording I saw on Lion Brand's website they have it on sale for three dollars a ball. So if you want to try some go grab it now because that is an amazing deal. I like this is half double crochet and look at that drape. Like if you want to make some children's garments I think this is perfect for that. Uh, Emily's cardigan so far needed four balls and hopefully this is enough for the ribbing. So five would be safe and that's for a size six, a kid size six. And so you could add or subtract balls uh, estimated from there when you place your order. Cause I will say I got the first three balls in my Lion Brand mystery box and then I needed a fourth ball. And when I got that one, it was a different dye lot, but you, you can't really tell too much. I mean, it's a very subtle difference, but there is a difference. So yeah, that is my progress on the ice cream cardi party. The ice cream party cardi. <laughs> uh, and then I do have another work in progress to share. I'm working on my second sample for the simple asymmetric mohair shawl. So that's a free shawl pattern that I put out a couple weeks ago. I've got a video tutorial here on YouTube and the free pattern PDF download on Ravelry and my website. And this is what it looks like. If you haven't seen it, or maybe you have and need a refresher, it's an asymmetric shawl using a strand of fingering weight held with a strand of mohair silk. And it's just basic double crochet rows with some fun lace stripes. And this pattern is charted too, by the way, making it a great opportunity to learn how to read charts or to skip the written instructions altogether because I frequently like to do that. And I've noticed people using uh, following the Lift Your Spirits crochet along because it is an intermediate pattern and it is more complex. Uh, people are finding it easier to learn how to read charts and follow the chart. So how cool is that? That's super exciting that my pattern is um, convincing people to learn a new skill and try something maybe outside of their difficulty level. I love it so much. Uh, so here is my progress on my second sample. I wanted to see this shawl worked up in a different color way because I used this bright color with black. I wanted to see, well, what happens when you use a color other than black for the mohair? So it does wash over the whole pattern. Uh, let's see, is this better to show it? So the original colorway has these like magenta and green and then you can see the blue matches the mohair and then you can see where the uh, fingering weight gets dark but it's still kind of that same blue wash over the whole thing. This blue wash. So this is Hobie Kid Silk and I love this one. Um, I hate to say it but I prefer this one over the Mayflower Super Kid Silk. It is it is a lot softer. The more that I work with it, the more I love it so much. So this is a mohair silk blend. And then this is the colorway that I'm using for the fingering weight. It's urban skyline. And you can see the blue really wash over everything here. So that magenta doesn't really quite pop in the shawl like it does on here. The, it, it kind of, turns into a purple because it's got that blue over it it starts showing as more of a purple so I am really loving the way that the shawl's working up it's giving me mermaid vibes and I think that it's going to be a great accessory uh, for something that 
has interest but still isn't like super bright in your face. I think it's a great way using a solid color other than black. Well, even the black tones it down. Using the mohair is a great way to tone everything into kind of the same hue, making it a little more versatile piece for somebody who's not quite as adventurous as adventurous with color, but you get to work with adventurous color. So, yeah. I am loving having this as like a downtime project because there are, especially as you get to near the end, there are long stretches of just double crochet that are great for social crocheting. And by social crocheting, I mean even like virtual, right? I was working on this while FaceTiming with a friend last week. So it works great for that. Moving on to check it out. Check it out. Oh, this is, this is too good. This colorway was dyed specially for me. Look at it. Oh, look at this orange goodness. It is so beautiful. They nailed it. They nailed it so hard. So this colorway was dyed by Stardust Fiber Studio, which is a local indie dyeing company to me in Washington State. They worked with The New Knittery, which is a local yarn store in my area. It's up in Renton, Washington. And so it was that store's second year anniversary and they worked with Stardust Fiber Studio to work with every employee and volunteer to come up with a special colorway just for them. So I sent a picture of my favorite corner of my house. It's a corner in my kitchen. It's my little happy place and said, orange is my favorite color. Here is my favorite corner, run with it. And this is what they came up with. And I got to name the colorway Pumpkin Queen. Oh, it's so perfect. I am getting ready to order a sweater quantity of this yarn because it has to be a, a sweater called Pumpkin Queen now. It just has to be. I just don't know what base I want it on yet. So I was gifted this hank on their, one of their sock bases. Unfortunately, I'm not sure exactly which one. Uh, if I know by the time I get this out, I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. But they are dyeing the colorways over any base. So you can only get this colorway through the new knittery. I don't think it's on their website yet, but you can call during their open hours or send them an email to place an order uh, that's dyed on demand. And you can use any of Stardust Fiber Studios bases. So I don't know if I wanna do a fingering weight uh, cardigan because I'm thinking cardigan. I have I've had this idea for a cardigan for myself that's based on one of my favorite cardigans ever. Uh, that's store bought, and I I want to take the shape and adjust it just a little bit, and I think this would be perfect for that. So I just don't know if I want to do it in fingering weight or DK weight yet. I'm gonna swatch some of this up, see how it behaves, see if I like it, but I might. I don't know because I don't want the sweater to be too thick either. I'm conflicted, but I do know I want a sweater out of this colorway because it is, ah, it's so good. Uh, so yeah. I, oh, and they shared swatches of the colorway made up too. So I will share the photo of all of the exclusive colorways that they did for the new knittery and you can see mine in the lineup with everybody else's and how they worked up. Um, Again, all these colorways, are they're not on Stardust Fiber Studios website. They're exclusive through the new knittery. Um, and I'll link how to get that down below if you're interested. But I am in love and I've never had yarn dyed, like a colorway dyed specially for me before. And oh, they just, they nailed it. They nailed it. So moving on to Let's Chat. School's in session here. My goodness, the kid this week is both of the kid, the my two older kids first full days of school and it's going really well. It's just a bit of an adjustment to get used to the schedule. Uh, and then like I mentioned last podcast episode, I am getting help with Annie so that I can work from home more often and I can put out more patterns and more tutorials and more videos. And I'm super excited about having that time to work completely distraction free so far 
it has been amazing and I'm really excited about it. Uh, so speaking of, um, I have been able to work on getting that goals and slips tutorial out. So you should have seen that come out earlier last week and then I should be able to now get out the cowl and eventually the hat that match and it should help me start to get out the ice cream party cardi sooner as well as Annie's overall pattern which I found out is called a pinafore. So um, I still haven't named that one yet but all in good time. Um, and with this year's Halloween Mystery Crochet Along going so well, I have started brainstorming um, how I could potentially make this an annual thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it a mystery or not yet, maybe, because it is going so well, but I've started brainstorming that. I also have uh, magazine design. I sent out a call for submissions and I found out today that it was accepted, so I've got that to work on. I just sent out the email for yarn support. Once that comes in, I'll be working on that in the background too. Uh, and speaking of, I also got the email that my very first magazine submission that I submitted like a year ago, uh, that issue is going to be coming out at the end of this month. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys when it comes out. It is my first published design. It's crazy. I mean, I've independently published designs, but this is the first time I'm going to have one of my patterns publi published in a magazine, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm so excited. I'm having so much fun uh, submitting and getting my designs published in magazines. So I'm excited to share that with you guys at the end of the month. I want to say September 28th. Uh, my pattern will be available in Annie's Crochet Magazine, their winter 2021 issue. I'm so excited. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.